It's time we talk about Russian science fiction. Welcome to the Film Threat Podcast. I am Chris Gore. I am pleased to have on the show today Sputnik director Igor Abramenko. I am hoping I, I pronounced that correctly, Igor. Have I? Yeah, absolutely. It's it's, it's great. Well, I, I had uh, I had Russian grandparents, so um, really, so yes, yeah, so I I you know what I can fake my way through it. I, um, but let's talk about this uh, uh, this film. It's um, first of all visually amazing. The creature, which I'm glad you don't give too much away in the trailer, is unlike anything we've seen. It certainly has its roots in Alien, but it's it's also vastly different. I think that's a too simple a comparison is to compare it to the original Ridley Scott alien. Where did this come from? And where did this idea just sort of sprout, so to speak? Uh, well, uh, I was I was a huge sci-fi fan since I was a kid. And, um, you know, uh, I was, uh, in my childhood, I was deeply influenced by such movies as, uh, you know, as Jurassic Park, uh, then uh, I watched all the Steven Spielberg mo other movies. I watched James Cameron movies, and when the time came for me, and when I finally decided that uh, I'll do my first feature, I knew that it would be sci-fi, obviously. So, um, so that's how it started. I mean, that uh, I always wanted to do that. Well, what what I really, really love about the film is just how vastly different the take is. Um, the, there's dis mistrust between the scientists and the military. Um, there's, it, it's just, a, it's just a tone. And I feel that just comes from just a, a different way of looking at, at things, obviously being Russian. How do you think that that influence? I mean, um, I always like to see world cinema and how, um, uh, different cultures, you know, process science fiction. This is this is very different than anything that we've seen before. So, can can you speak to, you know, some of some of that? Well, yeah, sure. Um, I mean, that uh, initially there was uh, a core idea. I would say that you know, to do that um, quite conventional sci-fi horror that unfolds in a um in a very common setting for the russian audience which is uh 80s soviet union and uh you know our like internal pitch uh inside the production company was that we were literally doing a russian uh russian alien but uh that was just a starting point and we just saw that it would be uh be kind of interesting to to do to do so you know in terms of mixing the genres the texture the visual texture and to bring the alien into the soviet union but that was just just a starting point for us i mean uh then we we quickly realized that we need to come up with a, a really fresh and original idea with a deep and striking human drama and quite a universal story that could grab audience attention and um and well i hope that eventually we succeeded well the 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 creature design is also something that's unique about the film um in addition to the vision and the tone but the but the the creature design i don't think i've seen anything like this or uh seen anything used this way there's sort of different transformations of this creature can you tell me about what went into the design of the creature and how you mixed practical effects with some cgi well we didn't mix them unfortunately because you know we well from the start uh i wanted to to do such and such, I mean, to do practical effects with CGI, but then we decided to go fully CGI and it it helped us a lot. I mean, that we had a hundred percent control of the creature of the character during the post-production. And it even allowed us, you know, to come up with a, with the new scenes that 
hasn't been you know in the script or storyboarded because we just you know we've been watching the uh the dailies uh, the uh, the edit and uh, and just a few ideas popped up and we we did it and in terms of designing this creature it was another challenging part that um we um we knew from the start that it's it's really hard to do something original when the um there is there will be so much resemblance with the alien or other iconic uh, mo monsters that already exist and we the, i would say that the thing that the smart thing that we did was uh, where we started to treat our uh, our alien not as a visual element but as a character the character that has you know its own goal uh that uh, has its you know uh, other characteristics that changing and evolving throughout the movie and um, that's that's how we did it well i i i i have to say i'm a little bit embarrassed because I thought I assumed that there were some practical effects mixed with some CGI. You're telling me it's fully CGI. It's fully CGI, yeah. And uh, wow, these guys from the main road post uh, CGI company, they did an amazing job. And I just uh, they they were literally magicians. <laughs> I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It just uh, yeah. I I I don't know. I just there were. I mean, wow. Okay, so that shows you how good the effects were. So. Uh, kudos to you and your team. Uh, this is also the, what's interesting about what you did is this is this is also a type of monster that is a sympathetic creature. This isn't your, um, you know, an alien. It's pretty cut and dry. The alien is, I mean, it's a monster. In this, it's it's much more nuanced in the sense that the creature is sympathetic because, you know, it's it's sharing. I, I guess, uh, for lack of a better word, life force with the cosmonaut. So, can can you talk about in the storytelling how you went about, you know, making that work? It's it's definitely yeah. unique. Sure, thank you. And uh, I mean, there was uh, there was another interesting aspect that we could play with. Uh, that you know, you're absolutely right that this. Uh, this creature, he's uh, sharing his conscious with the main character. I hope, yeah, it's not a spoiler <laughs> at all. Uh, and um, and that was uh, was a great thing to play with, and it allowed us to you know to find uh, different interesting behavioral patterns uh, of this creature, how he moves, how he you know crawling throughout the space, and it, it was. It was a f real fun to work with the uh, animators during that post production. We've been chatting a lot, especially especially we've been discussing those th things where he uh, interacting with this toy that belonged to uh, main protagonist's son, and we thought that wow, that scene should be you know very uh, should ha has very human touch, and that it's a kind of a challenging task to you know to uh, to to do to to force your alien creature to act like a human and uh but it worked out i think now i mean it's um it's really effective just because it's 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 also something i never would have expected um i don't think that's too spoilery that's there's a, there's a, a lot of things suggested uh in the trailer um what is it like also you're you're making this and this is um i mean what i love about sci-fi is it is it transcends you know uh it transcends borders um for, for sure and i really like that sci-fi is a way to discuss things that are in the zeitgeist that i think are are difficult for for us to to talk about um can can you talk about what what kind of thinking went into the themes in this and and what you're trying to say with with this film because it's just so unique among in the genre well yeah i mean that uh, uh as i said that um you know, uh, the science fiction, horror, 
all that storyline with the creature um it's just setting it's just an, an environment to unfold very universal human story and that was our goal i mean that we really wanted to dive deep into the characters into their past into um into their backstories and we tried to design each character um in sort of three-dimensional way and we um tried in some way i would say to explore the human nature i mean that we tried to showcase uh persons with the with its fears with its beliefs uh, with its good and its bad and you know uh also this this creature that it's an important part of the idea i would say that it's uh on one hand it represents a physical threat um and deadly threat a terrible creature that lives inside these uh this uh, cosmonauts but on the other hand it also represents you know his dark half something that he has inside him and it's sort of you know eternal struggle internal confrontation between the, the one half and the second half and uh, uh, i mean that every human being has its uh, has such two halves inside him and it's uh, it's an internal never ending struggle and that was kind of you know an important aspect for us yeah I, I i think it i think it totally works and what i'm really fascinated about is how people have reacted i mean you made a very you know it, it's not this is not an american science fiction film i feel like there are certain tropes and cliches what i like about this is just how unique it is i'm curious um if you're surprised by the reaction internationally to the film and, and what people have thought about it. i know that um our reviewer uh, Alex Savala from Film Threat loved the film and was raving about it. I did too. I approached him. I said, "Dude, you have to see this." Um, he's originally from Russia, by the way, and uh, he really? writes. For the, yes, he writes for, for the Film Threat website. So I thought, well, he would ha he would have some unique insight. So I don't know if you've read the review on FilmThreat.com, but I'm curious. It's resonating clearly, resonating with people outside of of Russia, and I love that when a film like, say, a film like Parasite you know, or yours will kind of break out internationally. I find that, I, I, I just find that exciting, I, you know, what it says about us. Can you speak to, you know, your thoughts about uh, this film transcending uh, internationally and affecting audiences worldwide? Well, sure. Well, first of all, thanks for that kind comparison with Parasite. Um, and I think that, as I said earlier, that the only thing that we, uh, We've been trying to do. We've not. We're. We're not. We're not, we're not do, doing uh, a movie about the about the monster and about the monsters. We've been doing a movie about the humans, and we tried to, you know, to to tell uh, kind of for that type of story that you know could be understood absolutely everywhere. No, no matter. What what the language? Uh, no matter what, it, it doesn't matter what uh, you know or what the country it is. It's it's just you know like polyphonic. Uh, I would say. I mean, and and I'm really I'm really glad and uh, when I'm receiving you know different feedbacks from different people from other country, and I can see that it worked out. I mean that they respond to the story. They uh, feel attached to that story, to that characters, and. Uh, uh, and I mean that I consider that we did a nice job. I mean that terms that uh, we delivered that story in an emotional way. I, I mean, you totally, I mean, you really said it. What's interesting is the creature is not really the monster. I would say not to give too much away. There are humans in your story that are the real monsters. And yeah, I think that's true. Yeah. And so that, that yeah, dude, it, it's, it's awesome. Um, uh, I, 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 Igor Abramenko, thank you so much for doing the film threat podcast. I also have to thank our sponsor Storyblocks. Um, if you're a filmmaker, go to storyblocks.com slash film threat. Uh, there are lots of special effects there. You want to, you want to up your small indie movie to a big budget 
and and you know be where Igor is sitting talking to us on the Film Threat podcast. Go to storyblocks.com slash film threat. Igor, I want to ask you, would you would you give just for anyone listening to this or watching this? Only for r people who can understand Russian, do you have something to say to um, s someone in Russian about the film? I, I would love to just, I'm not gonna understand what you say, but I would I would just love to, to you know, hear you uh, say something to Russian listeners or viewers. So I should speak in Russian. Please. Yes, please. Um... Один совет для просмотра фильма. Смотрите его в ночное время, выключите весь свет и получайте удовольствие. That's it. <laughs> Igor Abramenko, thank you so much for being on the Film Threat podcast. It's a pleasure talking to you. And congratulations. The, the movie is fantastic. I'm a huge science fiction fan. Obviously, there's a Hell 9000 like right behind me. Um, yeah, so I know this. Yeah, so uh, just thank you. I, I really love sci-fi that pushes the limits, that sci-fi that is ultimately about ideas. And um, you, you just you just nailed it with Sputnik. So thank you so much for being on the Film Threat podcast. I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Chris. It, it was a pleasure. And thanks for having me today. And hope to see you in the future. Thanks. Cool. Thanks. Bye.